Now, some people have been asking me, how the hell am I funding this? Well, with great difficulty. We, of course, had the Kickstarter campaign that raised $80,000 and that kickstarted it off. Odyssey Catamarans has come to the party and they're providing the shell, but we need a hell of a lot of sponsors to fit the boat out. Now, probably every week or so, I'm gonna be introducing a new sponsor that has come on board. Now, the first sponsor I'm gonna introduce to you is Peplink. Peplink is a global company that specializes in robust internet solutions for the most challenging environments. What could be more challenging than the marine environment? They provide industry grade routers, antennas and switches for both Starlink, Wi-Fi, 4G and 5G connections with a strong focus on redundancies and roaming capabilities. So what does all of this mean? Some people are going to be saying, why don't you just get Starlink and be done with it? Trouble is Starlink's expensive and we're going to have to pay per gigabyte and Peplink is going to be saving me money. They're going to provide me with this very fancy router which is going to be connected to Starlink and internet uh, or land based internet connection through SIM card and also it will pick up on Wi-Fi. And so for example let's say heaven forbid I'm in a marina I'm using marina uh, Wi-Fi and I go sailing well I'll be on marina Wi-Fi until that cuts out then it'll go to 4 or 5G land-based internet connection. And then with this new fancy uh, dome antenna that Peplink are also gonna provide, I'm gonna get land-based internet connection from a long way out offshore. Before I even get to Starlink, I'm still using the much cheaper land-based internet connection. And of course, if that cuts out, then it just goes to Starlink. So it's gonna save me money. Now this is just a brief introduction to Peplink. If you want, just go check out the links in the description below. Um, we'll certainly do more on it when we do the unboxing and we start installing it. So good on you, Peplink. Top stuff for sponsoring the Elcano World Challenge. Another fun-filled episode full of things you've never seen before, like welding, grinding, cutting, moving bits of aluminium or aluminum depending on where you're from from a to b and back again with more cutting tacking remeasuring and more grinding welding did i mention grinding yes there might be some grinding as well i'm going back in getting the action that's right people holding the camera is action and filming others is also action and did i also mention teamwork that's right teamwork no comments here people Did I mention hammering and wedging and possibly clamping? Yes, I know you probably haven't seen it before on this vlog. Well, now you're gonna see it in this episode in abundance. Okay, so he's just trying to cut it off at the chine. So uh, that'll be trimmed. Hopefully we'll get another shell plate on the bottom. And there is some exciting news. We have to make room for a one-off 24 meter boat coming soon. Behind me, in fact. Now that is going to be one big boat. That says it all, people. 
nothing but quality people. Hi people! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to ring that bell over here. Adonis is using his sharp eye to see everything in order. And it is, people. It always is. Well, we have a few little problems here and there. So what do you think he's doing here? There are stiffeners already on the forward side of this bulkhead. Does he need any more? My guess is he's getting this exact because they've got a piece to go on top but he's putting in the stringers first. So I'll put in the stringers now and he's making sure it's exactly square and in the right dimensions. Because when you have a sheet like this and you're welding, it sort of buckles a bit. Now they've got stiffeners on this side but that'll stop it buckling this way. But it can sort of waver that way and that's what he's just sorting out now. Okay, 10 minutes? Yeah, here, make a pot and uh, it down. Oh. Okay, great. Another shell plate going on. That's three pieces today. Crazy. These guys, and they've actually removed half my guys from my boat, put it under the other boat. Can you imagine if he had the full complement, 10 or 11 guys on this boat? It'd be done in like two months. Well, the shell. Unbelievable workers. Unbelievable. Oh, and there it is. The next edition. and another piece is going on. That's four shell plate pieces going on today alone. That's the record. Yes, they were smaller than the big pieces on the bow, but we're not moving slowly and surely, more like moving quickly and efficiently to the end goal. The shell will be finished within the month. I'm still calling for crew people. If you want to look at the criteria, go to episode 20. It's all there, but basically, this is what I'm looking for. And make sure you accompany your video with the following information in bullet point form. No flowery language or prose. Please, no Shakespeare. I do not have the time. Hello, my name is Dick Dewey. I live in Sydney, BC, Canada, and I'm a sailor. I've had three careers. I was a carpenter, I was a high school teacher, and uh, a financial planner. My favorite thing is to build boats and sailed them. I've been sailing and boat building since I was five. Blue is uh, was my first cruising sailboat that I built in 1982 to 86. Uh, it was a steel hulled sloop designed by Dennis Ganley of New Zealand and sailed it from Sydney, British Columbia, where I live, uh, as far as the Watanale with my enthusiastic partner.
and we're just headed off to Mazatlan. We, uh, you're wondering, these are solar panels, they're dirty. I have since sailed from Alaska to Panama and back up to Florida. Uh, I have about 25,000 sea miles, so I know my way around boats and I know the names of all the parts. I love to build boats. I'm really good at electricity. I have a degree in physics. I can wire up solar systems and electrical systems and plumbing systems and do carpentry and work with my hands. Built houses, a number for myself. I built houses under contract for other people. I've been a framing contractor. I'm really enthusiastic about building a boat, building another boat, working on another boat. I'm available virtually any time after May. I checked out the fares from Vancouver and they're economical and they go right to Ho Chi Minh. I only have a vague idea of where Vietnam is, but we'll get there. I do have navigational skills. I've taken seamanship and navigation courses. I have a few very simple personal rules. One is do what you say you're going to do. Second one, of course, is answer the phone, but that probably won't be a problem. My sailing philosophy is, you know, um, defined by being a superlative seaman. A superlative seaman is one who successfully avoids situations requiring his superlative seamanship skills. I do have a sense of humor, um, and it's not to everybody's taste, but tough means. Good on you, Dick. Well done. I like Canadians. They are frontiersmen, just like us Aussies, except they have a funny accent. I might have to pull you up here, though, Dick. You can only be additionally funny to the vlog and endearing if you're in a bikini and you get anxious about pineapples and your name is Lisa. We're going to be at Cocos in two or three days. We're going to be down on two... <laughs> two. Probably two pineapples. Now listen to me. I dreamt because we ordered pineapples. And I dreamt that we missed them because we were, I don't know, at the wrong spot at the wrong time. And he texted us, where are you? What are we going to do with all the pineapples that you ordered? And I was so sad. And yes, people, Lisa is coming back to the boat. We are arranging this now. But we need to get through the next three months, which, well, is going to be a bit iffy. So join up and become a patron or a PayPaler and let's get us back on track.